Welcome to lecture 5 of the course on corrosion and environmental degradation and surface engineering. Today's lecture topic is erosive and cavitation wear. In previous lectures, what we have learned something on adhesive wear and may we mention that my adhesive wear happens occurs because of the material transfer and surface damage is due to the intermolecular adhesion that means we need to reduce chemical activity of the surface. In abrasive wear we studied on hard particles or asperities which are moving or removing the material from a surface. In this lecture particularly erosive or cavitation wear material will be removed from a solid surface, but due to action of impact of or solid particles or fluid also. That means, a liquid will be able to remove the particle from a solid surface. In this lecture, we will be discussing that velocity plays a very important role when we talk about the erosive or cavitation wear. And in erosive wear, even the particle velocity along with a dimension if the particle size is bigger then it is going to impact more or will cause a more severe wear. The only question comes do we really require to study the erosive wear and cavitation wear. In my view it is very important to understand this kind of wear phenomena because if we understand the signs of the erosive wear and cavitation wear even we can utilize this science in a betterment of the society. We can make a better product for the society and we will cover a couple of examples in this lecture. So, let us start with erosive wear. Now, in this erosive wear also we are considering the grit the way we have considered in abrasive wear. Here we are also mentioning that this grit will be carried by the liquid or gas. It will have a some velocity. What is that some velocity? The velocity has to be more than 10 meter per second. In abrasive wear, we also consider the grit, but as asperity or particle and we were keeping the velocity lesser than 10 meter per second. While in this case, the velocity is a more than 10 meter per second. Another important aspect is the 5 micron particle size. The particle size is a lesser than 5 micron, then it will not impact, it will not cause a severe erosive wear. We may neglect the erosive wear at all. We say the lesser than 5 micron size particle is not going to impact, but keep in mind even the 50 micron size particle we will not be able to detect as a separate entity. Our eye is restricted is that we can see 38 to 50 micron and some people are even not able to see the 60 micron particle size distinctively also. So, we will not be able to see those particle and then what, what we are talking about the 5 micron which is more like a not distinguishable we cannot really distinguish the particle as such. So, this was a grit related then comes uh, velocity impingement. Uh, that is an uh, impingement angle. If angle is a smaller maybe say alpha in this case is a maybe say 5 degree what will happen 5 degree. Now, if angle is increased to the 30 degree what will happen to 30 degree? If angle is increased to the 60 degree what will happen to the 60 degree? So, there will be situations and we will be discussing about those situations. A speed need to be greater than 10 meter per second it can go even 100 meter per second and then uh, we know very well the solid and liquid both are very uh, we say that can remove high later of the material when the velocity increase significantly. So, this is uh, what we have studied in abrasive wear and then we are going to play with a grid size speed impingement angle and maybe the hardness of the sub, uh, substrate material or material which will be getting removed uh, from a surface. So, what we mentioned here uh, overall erosive wear mechanism it will be getting affected with a particle angle or angle of impeachment angle of attack it will be affected with a speed it will be affected with the size and here another one new thing is coming the phase. 
So, it can be a solid or a liquid, a liquid or solid in this case. Why we are studying this kind of uh, phenomena? Because it is very, very common in almost all kind of mechanical system which are relatively moving will be subjected to some sort of the dust particles. And the very severe case is the gas turbine blades which often fail because of the particle impingement or maybe say particle erosion uh, which occurs on a gas turbine blades. This is another one common thing is a slurry. The particles are hardness will be very high, angle will be in the also there, uh, angle of impingement and then that also will cause a pump uh, failure, impaler as well as a housing. So, we are showing housing, we are showing impaler, you are able to see here that uh, erosive wear, we are able to see erosive wear. Somewhere the doubt also comes, is it a completely erosive or corrosion is also there. So, there will be a some sort of a corrosive assisted erosion wear, naturally the particle may come with a some sort of water uh, droplets, they also get impinged on that and there is a possibility the corrosion also happens and erosive wear occurs. Again, this is a long term process, it is not going to happen in one day or two days or five days or one month, but it is a long term process, it we require continuous uh, uh, monitoring of this kind of phenomena to come up with a uh, right solution. So, what I mentioned here, there is a possibility of the rust, when the iron uh, is a uh, um, the material, then we will talk about the rust, other material we can think about a corrosion. So, corrosion and rust will also play important role in the this kind of erosive mechanism. Now, let us uh, have a little more detail, you must have seen this kind of uh, a mountain and then as a passage made by the water, you can see here and then what we call is a water erosion is a one of the very common uh, phenomena in a nature, water will make a way, uh, will erode the rocks, will, will erode the um, number of things and which we can utilize also in a better manner. Similarly, we have uh, come across the sand dunes also, sand dunes will be formed and will be distorted because of the, this erosive phenomenon. So, this is these are the common things and another one good uh, point uh, has come to understand that when we are studying the rock wear, you see is the hardness is not going to play a major role. Here what is more important is a high toughness, if the toughness is a good, toughness is a better than what is the minimum requirement then erosive wear can be prevented, can be stopped. But if we keep only the hardness, what will happen because of the harder and harder material, brittle uh, nature will come there and because of the brittleness, there will be lesser resistance to the erosive wear. And if there is a lesser resistance to the erosive wear, naturally this kind of a phenomena will occur, material will be broken in the two parts or maybe the more number of parts and then there will be number of tunnels in this number of grooves in this that will cause a more and more failure. So, what we can say erosive wear is a kind of the abrasive wear, the way we have uh, when we started abrasive wear, we say that similar phenomena happens also in erosive wear. So, what again we are mentioning same thing, it is a form of abrasion, why it has been categorized different manner, reason being instead of the load what we used to uh, write in case of the abrasive wear or maybe say even uh, adhesive wear will be replaced with a function of velocity or kinetic energy. I will say it will be that we will be using the function of some kinetic energy not a load. In this case the load is indirectly coming in form of the energy and energy of the particulated is going to play more important role. That is why we say the velocity and velocity and we know then kinetic energy velocity and then the kinetic energy will be proportional to the V square, but in case of the liquid it may turn out to be in a form of V to power phi. So, fluid erosion will be more damaging compared to the solid erosion that will be studied in a, this lecture. Another point the important comes in this case if the energy or kinetic energy is a laser then toughness comes into the picture and rubber being elastic in a nature, it can even sustain more absorbing energy. It can even the beat brittle materials, even the ceramic materials in some situations. So, in the situation this may in this manner, uh, we can replace even the brittle material or ceramic material with the rubber material, that is important for us. So, what we are mentioning in this case for particle with a less kinetic energy 
then threshold value actually threshold value will be there and then, uh, and then the rubber will play uh, important role it can resist erosive wear and in this case if energy is a more than threshold value then rubber will tear away it will be in uh, parts and then it will cause a more rapid wear. So, that means when we are trying to utilize our science in a better man we need to know what is the threshold limit how much energy really can be absorbed by the rubber material. Of course, there are number of rubber material elastomers, every elastomer will have a different threshold limits. So, we need to design parts from that angle. Many times we use only rubber coating, it can be a maybe a few mm only. So, that will overall play a very good role and provide us a good uh, uh, system design. Another one as I mentioned here uh, the erosive wear by the liquid particles cause a brittle failure that is why the wherever the particle the uh, liquid comes with a high velocity high flow failures will be brittle failure and we know the water jet cutting machine it is a well known for this it can really cut brittle uh, cause of brittle failure and good machining will come out of this obviously that we are able to make a good product using the water jet machining. So, brittle failure is the cause by the liquid particle and another mention I mentioned in this case rate of the wear is far more sensitive as we have already uh, discussed it is a power V to power 5 naturally it is much more sensitive sensitivity is very high uh, is a more sensitive compared to the particle velocity um, which is required for the solids. So, we can, can compare we say that is a V is a power to, uh, power to 5 and the V to power 5 is uh, related to the fluid erosion and, um, and uh, V square is related to the solid erosion. So, we, we can utilize this another point comes when we are discussing this uh, when the phenomena are these bad or good is the big questions will that be causing a the big failure or we can use this science in a better manner or we can really develop a good products. So, these are the important thing. And then, um, and then the one of the very very good example is uh, you know, the aircraft. We know the aircraft needs to pass through the clouds and we know the clouds will be having number of particles including the water particles and the relative velocity will be very high. Aeroplane will be passing from one place to other uh, below cloud to the above cloud at the higher speed. So, this is what we call a fuselage erosion which is a, the important failure in a aircraft industry or this aviation industry. So, flying through the clouds uh, air uh, plane fuse and the fuselage causes the wear down and then there will be number of micro cracks on the surface of the uh, this fuselage and uh, it will be subjected to the uh, liquid particle erosion. Now, if you try to define fuselage erosion, what is the meaning of that? You see, there is a gradual loss. Nothing happens of very fast immediately. It is a gradual loss of material uh, from aircraft fuse and uh, fuselage to surface. Reason is that weather conditions, different weather condition. We get a high velocity wind also, rain also, sand particles, and there is other possibility of the other foreign art, uh, items which will be available there. So, that is why we say the aircraft structural integrity will be in a and then we need to be a concern and then the life span also and because of the this kind of erosion the life span will be reduced unless we make some good design changes. What are the those design changes? We often go for the corrosion resistant and abrasion resistant coating and this abrasion is basically erosion resistant. So, instead of writing uh, abrasion it is a erosive uh, erosion resistant coating and that is what it can reduce the erosion. So, here we again we are using the word corrosion because of water will be there and then it can really cause some sort of corrosion phenomenon. So, both are the, uh, related they may say they can come in a sequence or simultaneously and depends on the wear and the mode at that time. And how do we really prevent this kind of failure? We say we require a routine a non destructive check. We cannot go with a destruction check, we cannot really scale down the model of aircraft. And here we, we need to use NDD test to continuously monitor what is really happening to the surface of the aircraft. 
and we need to figure out how many small cracks because it will be having some sort of cracks and causing possibility of the brittle failure. And then uh, we need to con be uh, conducting NDT test regularly to find out early symptoms of erosion. Naturally, there will be some sort of a threshold and if we can find out when the failure is going to be significant and we need to replace the body. So, then, then we can do uh, immediate action or we do really require to change the coating or reconditioning it is important to understand. So, these are the important aspect and uh, we need to avoid the damage because it is a really very costly industry and, uh, and any failure will cost a huge. So, we need to also have all kind of mechanism to prevent even small to small failure to the uh, aircraft. Now, uh, let us take a, uh, an, a good point as I mentioned the fuel uh, ledge is uh, something like uh, the bad for the aircraft, but can we really think about uh, some good thing uh, in uh, from a water point of view because we know that uh, if the water is uh, flown at a high velocity it will cause uh, good success. In this slide we are going to discuss about the water assisted tunneling method. It is kind of a new method which people are doing the research and what is the advantage of this method? If this method gets success, what changes will come? So, what is a tunnel first thing? We have seen number of times if there are more and more tunnels in a nation, it is a development stage will be on a higher and higher side. Roads will be smaller, obviously their path will be smaller and then development will be much faster. In overall way that there are number of machines which can be used for the tunneling methods, but there are two common methods which have been utilized as a drilling and blasting and second is a TBM that is a tunnel boring machine. Tunnel boring machine is very very costly machine and is suitable only if the tunnel length is a more than 2 kilometer. It is a very costly if the tunnel we need to make only 800 meter, 600 meter long or maybe say 1 kilometer, 1.5 kilometer. So, only the one process uh, it has been utilized in more widely in this race is a drilling and blasting. And what is that matter drilling and blasting? We try to make a drills in a, a rock or uh, whichever wherever we want to make a tunnel. After doing that we need to do a some sort of a grouting. We need to place uh, or we need to charge some sort of the bomb we need to place in a holes and then we need to go ahead with the blasting. As we go ahead with the blasting naturally there will be number of particles coming in environment. So, some sort of ventilation is required for that purpose to clean that environment otherwise people will not be able to serve there or work there. And again the mucking will be required to carry all the debris from that place to the far away place or uh, maybe to the some landfill area. Again uh, once it is done then a rock support is required some sort of a concreting or some sort of a reinforcement is required to make a tunnel. So, this is will go on continuously and uh, in this case particularly people can make a 3 meters per day. A uh, depth of the tunnel is something like a 3 meters per day which is a uh, very costly and then in addition it is going to cause a lot of pollution. While in this case uh, TBM everything is kind of robot. There is a big cutter hat and it will cut to the rock and complete the mud or maybe whatever the debris which is getting generated will be transferred back through the conveyor system. There is another conveyor system which will bring this kind of rings from a back side and will start placing the board uh, surface so that it provides appropriate support to the tunnel. So, this is a good machine, but it is very costly and then for smaller length or maybe say if the length of the tunnel is lesser than 2 kilometer, we should not use this kind of machine. And in most of the places particularly developing countries that we require small tunnels is not more than 2 kilometer. So, what will be the real solution? In the situation we can think about some different solution what we say that water jet cutting can be utilized to make a tunnel. So, we know very well water can make a passage 
even in a very big strong clouds also because of the brittle fracture. And why it happens? Because in the, the very high velocity of the water, it will cause a some sort of a crushing zone and then start going hard with the fractures. And this fractures can be controlled if a water jet is used properly and the water jet may be the pressure is very high, but it will cause a good overall solution and it will provide a far, far better solution compared to the uh, blasting. Because in case of the blast, stress fracture will be very, very deep and then maybe today tunnel is getting successful, we are installing successful uh, tunnel uh, complete uh, uh, concretizing it, but it may fail after 5 years, it may fail after 3 years because of the deep cracks. While in water jet, it is not, uh, um, the, will not happen, reason being the people who used to do even the mechanical cutting of the rock earlier, they have replaced all this rock, uh, rock cutting uh, with a water jet cutting. So, what is the proposed solution in this case is that if there is a some sort of a tunnel to be made in this form, I am just showing a tunnel entrance and tunnel exit uh, are the 1 and 2 and then we make a water jet, uh, pass a water jet other required rectangular shape or maybe whichever the shape is required and then we slice these parts maybe say 1 meter, maybe 10 meter, uh, 10 mm, 15 meter uh, mm depends on the requirement and we can remove complete slab itself. So, it will cause a laser pollution, pollution will be much lesser because still the rock is intact and it can be utilized in a better manner, it can be utilized uh, in the, the for development. So, laser pollution, more development and it will be a faster process also because we do not have to really uh, carry the muck. It will be done only the stones and it can be cut in appropriate shape and directly can be delivered to the right place. So, overall uh, and that will help us, but we are mentioning the rocks can be uh, made in form of the tiles and can be directly transferred to the right places. And then uh, another point comes the uh, water, uh, it is available in number of places, even water if it is not available in abundance, we can go have the recycling of water because there are number of technologies which are available. So, in this case particularly we can say water assisted tunneling method, it can really help us to make a tunnels reason being water can be acted at the high pressure and the flow rate as a cutting tool. What is really required to cut the rock water jet pressure need to be slightly more than the threshold pressure and what we are saying is the 20 to 25 percent pressure is in a higher side compared to the erosion uh, resistance of the rock, there will be some sort of resistance depend on the rock which kind of rock we are going to deal. The erosion resistance will be there and the pressure operating pressure is more than that as a 1.2 uh, times or 1.25 times then it, there will be possibility of the rock cracking that is what will create a, some sort of micro cracks in the rock and we can remove uh, grains easily in this case. And another one is that what is the pressure, what we have pressure, another is the flow rate. And then if the flow rate is uh, uh, under control, it can provide a good depth of the cut. Now, higher and higher flow rates, more and more depth of the cut, and so it can be completely designed according to that. In addition, whatever the loose particle coming out, if those particles are utilized as an abrasive particle even the wear rate will enhance in this situation. So, whatever the bad thing abrasive wear is a bad as such, but can be utilized in a better manner. It is going to really increase uh, on the wear rate which we really require to make a tunnel, we require a higher wear rate that is possible using this. And if, uh, if there is an abrasive wear and uh, which is available there itself, it can be reutilized, it will increase the efficacy of the cutting material. Another point comes as that because uh, we, we do we are not using the blasting method that there will not be demolition debris which will uh, be uh, environmental friendly, it will be cost effective, efficient and overall win win situation for us. Sometime people use a diamond wire setup to cut the back slice because uh, in the front size we, we go back to that the front side is possible the water can pass through this, but what will happen act back. And then there is a some sort of method what we call the diamond wire cutting method 
can be utilized along with water jet cutting. So, couple of methods together can make a very good solution or provide a good solution to us. So, this is a what uh, um, if you want more and more knowledge about the, this topic you can visit the website there are some sort of the uh, knowledge available on open domain and as I mentioned it is a still a hot topic it is the people are doing the research quite possible after a few years we will be able to see this complete technology proven technology and we will be able to see that tunnels are getting manufactured using the erosive your mechanism. Now, question comes how do I know what is the erosive uh, resistance, what is the resistance of material against the erosion. So, we can do a number of tests available um, and then, then, then there are number of setups available. I am showing the one of the sketch or maybe say one of the form of the test setup. Here uh, this uh, um, and then, then the system has been utilized to store the particles, erosive particles and then here we are using the compressor to pass the gas or maybe the air in this situation. If we use a water then we can think about the pump mechanism pump mechanism for the water and the velocity can be controlled with this. And another one is that how much how many particles need to be uh, passed or maybe what should be the flow rate of the particle can be controlled easily. Another one is that impingement angle if I am keeping a sample here by changing the angle uh, I can change the impingement angle which is a particle coming directly heating whether hitting it will be the 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree, 40 degree and 50 degree that can be decided. So, number of particle, size of particle, air flow and then sample uh, the, the angle can be decided and we can really conduct the good number of experiments on this setup. So, what is a, what I mentioned I am trying to uh, highlight the same thing, what is the procedure to do it that there is a hopper as I mentioned there may be a particle in this case we have performed experiment with the alumina particles possibility is here we use a 50 micron particle size but particle size can be anything can be uh, up to 100 micron uh, meter or maybe the 10 micrometer depends on what kind of uh, particles are, are uh, available or maybe in our industry which particle size is more uh, really uh, obtained more commonly obtained or maybe uh, the material which is subjected to the particle uh, dimension. So, this is uh, what we can do air compressor we use as I say if you want the carrier fluid as a liquid then we should replace it with a pump and then kind of the process fluid can be utilized there. Another important thing is that to maintain the because as I mentioned that earlier in presence of water there is a possibility of the rusting and corrosion and if you want a better and better environment and you want to really demoisturize complete particles there is a possibility we can do it at and maybe the air also can be demoisturized so that we can get a repeatable results. Otherwise, uh, and then the result one results will uh, one type of results will come in a morning time and another result will come in evening time maybe because of the different kind of a humidity at the morning to evening time. The another thing is that initially we need to uh, initially we need to go ahead with uh, some sort of uh, calibrated data. In this case that they are uh, in the, they have used uh, some sort of a 10, uh, 12 gram per minute pressure and then uh, uh, sorry and the 12 gram per minute uh, at the pressure up to 0.15 bar and velocity 60 meter but depends on the what kind of ASTM standard we are using and then ASTM standards provide all the guidelines how much pressure need to be set and then what should be the flow rate. Flow rate can be very high can be uh, the nominal or uh, requirement whatever the requirement we can go ahead with that. Another thing as I mentioned that we need to uh, have a test specimen this is a test specimen in this situation we need to mount in a specimen holder and then uh, against uh, we, we need to direct using the uh, nozzle we need to direct uh, the, the flow uh, on uh, impingement of the flow on this uh, sample. Now, in this case uh, experiments can be done at the 10 degree, 15 degree, 30 degree, 45, 60, 75, 90 and it depends on the various setups it can be changed. So, what will come out in this case? In this case if the material is known to us, environment is known to us we can find out what will be the resistance of that material against that environment or against those particles or flow rate of the particles or maybe. Uh, the process fluid also what will be the erosion rate based on that we can really calculate the 
coefficient or wear coefficient and we can provide a relative ranking of the different materials. If we have a 10 materials, we can relatively uh, give the rank maybe the material 1 uh, is a very good or material 2 is uh, the, the best or material 3 is the uh, worst in kind of the we can provide a rank uh, as per the uh, by conducting the number of experiments or uh, and this kind of setup. However, we know very well that every test need to be repeated 2 to 3 times in single set we if we conduct the experiment we cannot rely on immediately on that we need to perform more number of experiment even under same condition to get a repeatable results to avoid the noise and get a better results. Now, uh, we will move to the next slide and we I am showing us some results here in this case uh, as we mentioned earlier there is a particle or uh, and then there may be around 50 micron particle which we have used in this case alumina particles impingement angle may be 10 degree may be 75 degree may be 90 degree this many degrees of angle have been utilized for this purpose. We are able to see uh, the, the, this big span of uh, erosion at the 10 degree and this is what we call a cutting wear. At the 75 degree span is much lesser. So, we have uh, cut, uh, conducted the two place number one, uh, one place and two place while in this case is only one. So, you are able to see that um, in this case uh, spread is more, in this case the spread is lesser and in third case the 90 degree spread is much lesser right. So, in this case uh, where we say that if the angle of impingement is different even the erosion span will be lesser or uh, as the angle is increasing from a 10 degree to 90 degree and this span is the area is a lesser than the 10 degree area. Another important thing is that this makes a crater on the deep penetration you can see here that, that there is a depth in this case while if it is a shallow there is a possibility of crack formation or there is a possibility of the slight erosion. So, depend on the particle size depend on the material if there is a material is a brittle material naturally there will be some sort of uh, crack formation there will be some sort of uh, um, the, uh, the particle will be eroded at a much higher rate or uh, with the material erosion will be on a higher rate. So, particularly the 90 degree the brittle material is a bad material and uh, what we say that the 30 degree the even the ductile material is a bad material. So, depend on different different angle as I say alpha 30 degree do not use a ductile material because the wear rate in this case will be very high. If the alpha is a 90 degree do not use uh, uh, do not use brittle material. And there are number of curves uh, which we will be able to demonstrate in the next slide that we really need to know what will be the impeachment angle and select the appropriate material based on the requirement. Now, this has been shown here and then I am trying to show the slightly different manner as you say that the discharge nozzle when the angle is a 30 degree or maybe 10 degree what will happen there is a cutting action you are able to see the uh, this kind of a detached material uh, from uh, the surface. And here the uh, we can also test not only the material we can test also coating. You suppose if I, I have designed the 5 different coating the 5 different material coating I even I can test that materials and the material coating with the thickness whether they uh, that coating or uh, maybe the coating 1 will be better coating 2 will be better. So, it is not only the parent material, but coating also can be tested on uh, this kind of equipment. And in this case temperature also be uh, is one of the parameter we know very well at the high temperature material will change the behavior. And if we know the what will be the operating temperature and we are conducting experiments at that temperature that will be always advisable. Here in this case uh, we are able to see the crater and then the depth of the penetration of the particle is more and you can see here that the depth will be on higher much higher compared to the depth over here. While in this case the spread will be more as I said in this case the spread is more in this case depth uh, of the penetration is more. So, these are the some criteria as I also mentioned then in ductile mode the maximum wear will uh, occur at the alpha is equal to 30 degree again uh, different different kind of ductile material it can be 25 degree it can be 35 degree it depends on the kind of the different materials. But roughly we use the word the 30 degree for ductile material for brittle material 90 degree 
and then maybe a small slight change will happen because of the different modes of uh, or maybe the different kind of uh, uh, microstructure of the brittle materials. It can change 85 degree, 80 degree maximum can occur early uh, degree can be we can do a simulation also we will develop one relation to simulate this kind of uh, and the failure or we say the erosive wear of the this kind of components. Now, here what has been mentioned here the maximum impact energy which will be imparted to the ductile mode is uh, occurs at the 30 degree. That means, if whatever the energy which is coming with the particles it is getting transferred to the uh, coating or to the substrate or the material which is under tested. How much energy is really getting imparted to the material and that is what is mentioned as the angle is a 30 degree maximum energy will be given to the surface or whether in this case coating or maybe parent material. Always some energy will be lost with the particles also. But maximum energy in case of ductile material will be absorbed at the 30 degree that is why we are able to see the maximum uh, wear rate at that 30 degree. While in case of the erosive wear uh, happening in the brittle mode that angle is a 90 degree. That means maximum energy which is getting imparted to brittle material will be 90 degree. So, if we conduct the experiment uh, the 90 degree we will find a kind of the crater formation or the depth where the penetration will be much higher compared to the um, ductile material or a laser angle in this situation. So, these two are important to be considered when we are uh, discussing about the erosive wear and same thing has been shown in this slide also. You can see here there is a low angle 30 degree we are able to see the depth over here while in this case uh, 90 degree we are able to see uh, much bigger depth and you can see here the crater formation the many many cutting is happening on narrow domain while in this case is a more like a, the, 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 some sort of plowing or the plastic deformation along with the micro uh, cracks available or micro cutting has happened in this phase. So, what we can say the low impact angle cutting wear will prevail and in this case even the hardness can play a role, but at a larger angle particle uh, wear will prevail, uh, prevail and then in this case material need to be softer or what we say the tougher. So, tough material is a better word in this case and we can say tough material should be used if the angle uh, is a 90 degree or large angle the tougher will be the better results or we will provide a better results compared to the uh, harder material. Now, let us come to the, the another mechanism what we call a cavitation wear. Uh, we discuss something about uh, uh, erosive wear, but cavitation wear which also has a lot of similarities with the erosive wear. And then what are those similarities? In this situation particles are formed in a liquid form, it is not a, um, in a solid form and why a liquid can really make a particle, why it will get disintegrated into number of streamers or number of particles and there is a need to worry about that. So, what will happen in this case particularly every will fluid will have a some sort of gas in that and under normal condition it can be 0.1 percent, 0.2 percent and there will be gas will be getting compressed will not be a worrisome too much. But sometime there are bubbles which are subjected to very intensive pressure and particularly intensive pressure and if there is a convergent divergent domain to show schematically what we are showing there is a complete fluid here it is a pressurized one and there is a gas bubble and the gas bubble comes into contact with the surface naturally it will be getting subjected to extreme pressure from all the angles and the finally this bubble will get burst and when it gets busted in a wave energy it will generate it, it will be disintegrated into number of streamers, number of particles and finally that will be sufficient to make a, a kind of a impage a particle and make an impact on that and then remove uh, the kind of debris in the form of the fracture. So, what I can say the fracture formation and then it is not going to happen in one cycle it generally takes a many many cycles a multiple fluid impact cycles it takes. So, it is not going to happen in one cycle, but it happens in many many cycles and that is why we say the cavitation uh, uh, process is a slow process it start with a slow and then, and then there may be uh, one pit formation other pit formation and slowly it will expand and will cover the 
and then the major portion of the surface and many pits will be formed finally it will give indication. So, these are the not fatal as such will generate a number of cracks or pits and then we will be able to see that uh, number of pits and the material strength has come down significantly we should replace it. So, it is not going to cause a spontaneous failure, but surely it will cause a failure. So, if we want to um, think about the cavitation uh, where it happens because of the bubbles, so we say the formation of bubbles due to the low pressure area and then quite possible the bubble will grow and may be merged together. So, there is a one bubble here, there is another bubble here, there is a third bubble here, they get merged in this case, so the bubble get merged together, there is a bigger forms. Now, if the collapse, it is a collapsion, or the, it gets collapsed, uh, collapsed in, uh, uh, in fluid environment, then there will be some sort of a shock wave generation will occur, which may cause a some sort of crack formation. And if this uh, bubble is uh, getting burst on the surface, it will cause a pit formation. So, pit formation and crack formation both are possible when we think about a bubble bursting in this case. So, this is about we can say the collapsing uh, it will generate a shock waves that damages the surface, damage directly in, in, in terms of the pit formation or in terms of the subsurface cracks both are the possible. And this phenomena is almost in all kind of machineries which are operating on the fluid. So, in this case we say that it is a really uh, damageable or harmful to the propeller water turbine even the streamers uh, or maybe say even um, the, the, the ships and it is a very harmful uh, this kind of phenomena. However, in uh, people have done also good research to utilize the cavitation in an effective manner. So, that will be also discussed uh, not in this lecture, but uh, maybe uh, after a few lectures. So, uh, what if I uh, try to summarize my previous slide is that the cavitation happens when there is a built up of the negative pressure on the downstream phases of the object submerged in the liquid flow. Bubbles of the dissolved gases and vapor, in this case another word where we are using the vapor formation. It happens in the number of liquids because uh, I have worked on uh, hydrodynamic bearings and we have seen that the vapor formation, if the pressure goes lesser than vapor, then the gas bubbles, it will get converted and maybe the, there will be formation of the uh, vapor inside itself. So, that and then when it collapses in the area of the negative pressure, it may be fine or it may also impact directly on the surface. So, where is brought by the hammering impact of the repeated bubble collapse on a hard surface, even the harder surface can damage as I mentioned earlier. In this case, the toughness is more important, hard surface can resist to some extent, but energy is cannot be absorbed completely from a hard surface and there will be some surface cracks and if they those subsurface cracks collate together, it can form a uh, big pit also. So, in the, when the bubble uh, in the field or uh, on the surface of the inside the body as such, then there is a possibility of uh, uh, on the, the wear out or maybe the, uh, on the vertical wear will come out or material wear will be occurring in this situation. And this will cause a localized cracks, it will not have a definite location, maybe continuous spread will happen because we do not know the bubble when it will get burst at a which location exactly because it depends on the many, many situation, many, many conditions. And this as I mentioned the cavitation wear is a harmful to the propeller and water turbine and many machineries. Now, we will try to uh, look at the some sort of uh, equation mode, because we have been discussing about the velocity in earlier uh, lecture or uh, maybe say earlier mode of the, you know, the wear. Same thing we are trying to bring uh, a velocity form, we say there are number of stages of the cavitation erosion. Initially erosion rate or maybe say cavitation erosion rate will be gradual, it will occur slowly and then this we say the mass removal will be very slow. So, initial phase is this one right and then uh, maybe uh, if I think from a wear rate point of view, see this is a slow phase and then there will be acceleration and once our acceleration after that there is a steady state reason being flow uh, uh, there is a possibility that wear rate will not increase significantly and already the material has a degraded significantly and then we need to replace it. So, this is uh, what we are showing the pit is not going to be concentrated on one place, it will cause a continuous spread of the pit formation and gradually it will cause a more and more failures. So, this is what we can say and when we say that initially the rate will be lesser 
and then uh, 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 get a number of reasons may be that there is a possibility of surface hardening and slowly it will expand to the entire area as the area is increasing that we say that the weakening of the material is happening continuously it will finally cause a fracture possibility of the fracture or big crack formation also. Now, how do we really go ahead with uh, this uh, uh, prediction? We say in this case particularly the rate the flow rate is going to depending on the how much erosion will occur or how much cavitation erosion will occur on from a surface. So, it depends on the mass flow rate and the mass flow rate can be given in terms of uh, density or the volume and density remains a constant it is not going to change with the time. So, again it comes in the form of the uh, dv by dt is uh, the rate of change of the volume uh, with the time. So, this is uh, again uh, can be given or represented in this form. We need to concentrate on only initial phase we say that it, if it goes with a higher rate then we need to replace the components. So, uh, uh, try to uh, see uh, whether we can really replace those things or not. We have thought about uh, cavitation erosion equation, but we have a, uh, also the erosive wear equation and we need to think about how do we really develop a some sort of a quantification or some sort of equation which will be helpful to us. So, in this case uh, erosive wear equation uh, Hutchings provided initial model because we know the erosive wear largely depends on the kinetic energy and we need to have uh, some sort of a material constant or operating operational constant or a probability uh, the how much material will be removed from a surface. So, in this equation what they have considered the density of material that is a rho velocity u, u can be uh, maybe in this case uh, on the we already considered the some sort of a v uh, as a velocity we can say in this case u is equal to v. So, it is the initial particle velocity we are not counting final velocity is the initial particle velocity. However, he also considered the hardness surface hardness and given importance to surface hardness. Now, in this days we do not consider the surface hardness a very important reason no we know very well that we need to absorb the kinetic energy. So, the toughness matters more toughness will play more role compared to that. So, this we wear equation was uh, the erosion wear rate uh, equation was earlier started, but finally it was uh, modified in the other form. Now, that the wear constant in this case is a k 1 uh, density is remains same velocity has been changed to the uh, v power to n n is a uh, n generally remains more than 2 it is not uh, only 2. So, and then and for the metals we keep a lesser because the ductile material for a brittle material uh, it goes a less or higher than that 2.5 uh, and we say that it will be ranging from 2.5 to 3 for metal it is a 2 to 2.5, but it is always a greater than 2. So, this is a new one. Another one is that what will be the uh, alpha function angle of impingement is also important what will be the function uh, of the alpha and then they also kept uh, hardness as I mentioned that uh, we do not really need to think about hardness uh, maybe say it will be better to keep a k 1 by h as a another constant there is a possibility if we are changing the material the hardness it will uh, reduce the wear rate, but better we go ahead with a new constant k 1 by h instead of the thinking about hardness and reason being that we do not know the sensitivity if the hardness goes very high side and the brittle failure will occur quite possible a higher hardness is going to give a lesser uh, the more and more wear rate. So, better we change this uh, uh, k 1 by h as a when we make another constant instead of thinking only a separate k 1 and h in this case. Now, coming to the uh, f 1 alpha in this case uh, it can be a function whether the impeachment angle is uh, near to surface with angle is lesser than uh, 30 degree 40 degree. So, instead of uh, thinking this manner they use a summation and this summation is something like that cutting wear or deformation wear. In this case cutting wear angle of alpha will be lesser and then uh, deformation wear the angle of alpha will be on a higher side that is why there is a cos alpha if the alpha is a lesser naturally this cos alpha will be on a higher side will be dominating feature when alpha is on a more 90 degree side naturally the this sin alpha square alpha will be more dominating that means if there are more and more 90 degree side alpha that the deformation will dominate 
maybe say the alpha the near to zero side or maybe say 5 degree 10 degree 15 degree cutting wear will dominate in this case. Of course, a uh, number of people have given a different different relation for the deformation. They use a word uh, it is the extrusion mechanism that is a possible and then some people say that is a low cycle fatigue mechanism all are deformation related. Some people say that is a delamination reason being when there is a thin coating you bombard at the 90 degree there is possibility the complete coating will come out. So, it will be delaminated there is a possibility of the crater formation of the deep uh, plastic formation and some people say that if it is a shallow then maybe work hardening will be happening. So, naturally it depends on the environment to environment situation to situation number of researchers have a given different different domains uh, different different mechanism and they explain in different manner for our uh, lecture we will say only it is a function of deformation which is the whether the delamination with low cycle fatigue or maybe plastic deformation we are not going to consider only f d as a function. Now, f is a main function what is really how going to happen while this alpha and the cos alpha sin alpha is going to are going to provide as a only the uh, we say that uh, horizontal direction and vertical direction component to us. And then if we uh, get this we can really find we can differentiate and equate to 0 and we can find what will be the optimum angle or what will be the angle of the maximize, maximizing the deformation or maximizing the wear rate. That the way we have presented earlier we say mentioned that uh, either this is the wear rate and that this is alpha and I mentioned that clearly that for Britain and for ductile material the peak will come a bit really the 30 degree and then in case of the brittle material the peak will come somewhere 90 degree. So, this is uh, this can be obtained using by differentiation this, this use equation and then if you substitute and this is a final equation which is a more popular but we say the wear volume is a proportional to the uh, constant that is a wear constant and uh, as I mentioned it represents the wear coefficient and is the probability of the uh, removal of the material and as has been shown as the probability of wear particle formation and uh, A alpha is given as this manner I v is a function of the velocity as I say the particle velocity to power n it can be 2 to 2.5 and it can be 2 to 2.5 for metal and equal to 2.5 to 3 for ceramic and last one is a m that is a particle size if the particle size is double maybe say if particle size is double and if I am relating so it will turn out to be 8 times so, by doubling the particle we can increase the wear rate by 8 times. So, this will be helpful to design the product in a better manner and then give a good results to us. So, this is a quantification of uh, erosive wear and la last slide we say the some sort of quantification of the cavitation uh, erosion or cavitation wear. These are the two common terms in all the erosion generally comes with uh, cavitation also or in the, in the cavitation uh, sometime people say the erosive cavitation or cavitation erosion those th terminologies been utilized uh, more popularly. Now, I am going, going to show you a couple of the failures which we have experienced in our own lab on uh, hydrodynamic bearing. This is uh, the, the, the bearing used for the IC engine case and it can, IC engine can be petrol engine or maybe diesel engine and we have observed that the cavitation is more dominating in this kind of bearings and you can this is a cavitation wear and uh, this is a what bearing has shown and the same thing has been shown here cavitation wear. The question comes how the cavitation occurs in a hydrodynamic bearing where there is a lot of liquid available. So, we perform experiments on that and then the liquid was there it was uh, supplied to the, uh, the bearing we made complete bearing as a transparent bearing and try to figure out how the cavitation will occur in this kind of hydrodynamic bearing. What we have found in a convergent domain particularly this is the what we are using the word is a convergent domain the wear will not occur that means even the suction side there will not wear occur. But in number of other places the suction side the people have also experienced. In our case we have not observed on the suction side, but the release side the delivery side where the volume is a much higher some liquid gets leaked out from a side and now in a divergent zone we do not have a sufficient liquid. So, that is why the negative pressure generation occurs and the pressure is a negative and liquid cannot sustain a negative pressure. So, that is why this kind of streamers form inside. So, this is a gas bubble as such. 
this is a fluid or liquid or maybe say lubricant in this case there is a gas another gas form and the gas form and the gas form and we have seen this kind of streams. We develop a number of good equations to solve it and we have a couple of publications on this also to demonstrate the, how the streamers are formed or the gas is getting, the bubbles are getting connected. That is why the we say earlier showed that a couple of gas bubbles join together to make a bigger kind of gas bubble that is also possible in this situation. Now, if this complete thing is subjected to very high load and then to a reciprocating load, what will happen the gas bubble will get confused or maybe say the recip and the gas bubble is getting entrapped and then when it is subjected to high pressure and when subjected to the low pressure there will be continuously change. In the situation there is a possibility of the, uh, the, the bursting of the gas bubble and cause a uh, erosive wear or cavitation wear in this situation and that has been shown in this form as such. So, these are the important aspect we have discussed uh, something about erosive wear and sometime about the cavitation wear. And uh, uh, many times as I mentioned the cavitation erosion has been utilized instead of the cavitation wear. Sometimes um, the literature say wear phenomena and erosion phenomena are the different or separate. However, in our class we are saying the wear uh, is a bigger domain, erosion is a part of that domain itself. So, we will uh, cover the next lecture, uh, sixth lecture that will be basically on the fatigue, fretic and the melting wear or diffusion wear. Thank you for your attention.